Welcome back to Buy or Sell, the series where you pitch me your predictions, and I either buy or sell them and explain why. If you want to submit your own idea, leave a comment below starting with Buy or Sell, and I'll consider it for a future video. So let's dive right into it. This is Buy or Sell, Episode 4. Let's start off with Carl Emil Linhart. Phonix is going to be the best coaster in Scandinavia. Phonix does have some pretty good competition. You have to look across Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. And you got Puritan, the Intamin Megalite, Taiga, the Intamin Blitz, and Balder, the Intamin Prefab. I think Phonix stacks up to all those Intamins. But I'm going to sell this because there is one coaster that exists in Sweden called Wildfire. This RMC Topper Track Woody looks insane. One of RMC's best layouts. And without writing any of these, I'd pick Wildfire over Phonix. Benji Storm. Worlds of Fun will not get a new coaster anytime soon. How long can Cedar Fair torture a park? You think 13 years is too long and it can't go much further? Michigan's Adventure has something to say about that. I'm buying this because I can't bet on Cedar Fair to add anything new to Worlds of Fun. Some parks are easy to predict. Carowinds, Kings Island, Canada's Wonderland. They all get new coasters every four years or so. For all the small parks, it's impossible to know. If your home Cedar Fair park is Worlds of Fun, like it is for me now, I guess Kings Island isn't that far away, so go there. Doug Phantom 9 and Justin Morris. Six Flags St. Louis RMC's the boss by 2026 or 2030. I'm buying this. It's not unprecedented. I see this as kind of similar to the old Texas Giant. It was a big deal at the time it opened, but its luster came and went. The boss is a giant CCI wooden coaster. It's going to get harder to maintain over the years. The only question is, will it lose popularity? Six Flags hasn't treated St. Louis all that great, so the boss is still a popular ride. There hasn't been much else to get excited about. By 2030, the boss will be 30 years old, and they might finally pull the trigger. It makes a lot of sense. I hope they do it. I rode the boss twice, and I didn't really like it. Kevin Davis. Six Flags Fiesta Texas will turn the Rockville area into Gotham City, and the Rockville High School will be a Justice League ride. I'm selling this. Kinda. I think the days of Gotham City are over. At least, new additions of Gotham City. At Magic Mountain, Gotham City turned into DC Universe, just to be more inclusive. Fiesta Texas has a DC Universe right next to Rockville, and I think, if anything, they'll expand that to take over Rockville. The Rockville section is awesome, but it's making less and less sense. You got Batman the Ride, Wonder Woman, and turning the Rockville High School into a Justice League ride makes a lot of sense. In spirit, I do buy this idea, but just replace Gotham City with a DC Universe expansion. Massimo Parati. California finally gets a heavy-hitting coaster, one without land restraints or noise complaints holding it back. This is really interesting and really true. Look at all the big California parks. SeaWorld San Diego, they have a height limit. Disneyland and Knott's, noise complaints. Magic Mountain, they get held back by Six Flags budget, and pretty soon they'll be surrounded by homes. Great America is completely landlocked and 100% developed. Discovery Kingdom can't build higher than 150 feet. In the end, I'm buying this. Even though Knott's is landlocked, and they've had their issues with noise, just look at the tunnel on Ghost Rider's drop. They can still get a heavy hitting coaster despite all of that. Even if they have to fill the track with sand, that B&M Giga is still going to be awesome. Shimmy MK7. B&M will make a 300-foot dive coaster someday. I'm buying this. I know they started big and haven't really branched out since. In fact, they seem to be selling the smaller ones over the big ones. But Yukon Striker really pushed that bar up with that 245-foot drop. And I think over time, someone's going to want a 300-foot dive. It's not too far-fetched right now. Just add another 55 feet. Who's going to do it? I have no idea. It seems like the parks that might do it already have a dive coaster, like Cedar Point or the Busch Gardens parks. Maybe a park like Dollywood has it in them. Maybe Energylandia. Maybe Fuji Q Highland. Maybe a park in China. We'll have to see. Andrew Clue. Cedar Point will get rid of Corkscrew or Iron Dragon in the next 10 years. I'm buying this. At first, I wanted to sell. But if you look at the record over the last 10 years, they've closed down four coasters. Before 2011, they hadn't closed a coaster since 1978. As they become short on space, they're taking out their old or less popular rides. Corkscrew is historic. Iron Dragon serves as a good intermediate family coaster. But unless you think they're done axing rides over the next 10 years, what else is going to go? Maybe Dragster. Maybe Gemini. Maybe Magnum. I think Corkscrew or Iron Dragon could be in danger over the next decade. Theme Park Avenue. Cedar Point makes a new gen Vacoma family coaster next. I'm selling this, but with one caveat. If Iron Dragon gets to the point where it's too hard to maintain, and Cedar Point wants to replace it with something similar, possibly with a Dragon Slayer type theme a la Adventureland, I could see them going with a Vacoma suspended family coaster. That would be a really cool and very appropriate replacement. However, that's very specific, and I don't think that's going to happen in the short term. I think Cedar Point's next coaster is going to be a lot bigger than that. Jesse Gagnon. 
Six Flags will use the RMC Raptor model as a common clone, like the Batman clones. I'm buying this. I think COVID messed up their plans to do this sooner, but you're seeing them roll it out now. Jersey Devil and Wonder Woman in back-to-back -back years. I think Great America is next. And I have to think, at some point, the smaller eight-seaters will come to the small parks. When Batman came out in 1992, they rolled those out quick. Four years in a row, seven and nine years. I think they may be on that kind of run right now with the RMC Raptor. City Coasters and Alex Wilcoxon. Busch Gardens Tampa will remove Kumba, possibly to make room for a Giga. This was the million dollar question when this was reported back in March. Screamscape had some anonymous source, and they were very specific. Apparently, the ride was inspected and it didn't go well. Kumba was deemed to reach the end of its life, and the plan was to close the ride right after Hala Scream. There would be no retracking or refurbishing like we saw with the Hulk. It was done. Busch Gardens didn't want any more bad press after delaying Iron Gwazi, so they didn't plan on announcing it. After all this came out, the park had their own tweet saying the ride isn't going anywhere. Sometimes parks say this and then turn around and close the ride anyway, like we saw with Kings Island and Vortex. There was even one rumor that said this was all a plant by the park. They just wanted to stoke some interest in Kumba. That seems unlikely because they squashed the rumor so quickly. But let's look at the facts. Kumba is the earliest big B&M. Busch Gardens Tampa is a year-round park. That's a lot of cycles over 30 years. B&Ms do wear out. Look what happened to the Incredible Hulk over the course of 16 years. Granted, that had a lot more daily cycles than Kumba, given the crowds at Universal and 3 train ops, but it also needed an overhaul in half the time that Kumba's been open. We're entering uncharted waters with B&M. Their coasters only go back to 1990, and we're starting to test their lifespan. Nemesis at Alton Towers is one year newer and much smaller, and that's getting a major retrack also. At some point, probably in the not-so-distant future, Busch Gardens is going to have to make a real decision. Instead of retracking it, they may see more marketing value in adding a major replacement. A B&M Giga would be more than sufficient. It would also draw in big crowds. Not too many people would be missing Kumba when they're riding the new 300-footer. Maybe it doesn't close this year, but maybe next year. I guess this is my long-winded way to say I'm buying this. I have no confidence in this, but it's something to keep your eye on. The Warrior 949. An SNS 40 coaster will be announced in the US in 5 years. It's been 10 years since the last 40 coaster, and there was a 6-year gap before that. We thought 6 years was a long time. We're close to doubling that. I'm selling this for the US for sure. I know it would be an awesome addition for Cedar Point, but it's expensive and I doubt they want to deal with the problems. If this question was about the world, I think it's a possibility. If I had to bet, if this is going to be built anywhere at all ever again, it'll probably be in China. Scott, Whisperer of the Squirrels. California's Great America will once again be used as a testing ground, and they'll get the first mock extreme spinner in the chain. Canada's Wonderland has been more of a testing ground than Great America, but with Railblazer, I can see why some people would say that. They also had Stealth, but that was under Paramount. I don't think there's any way possible that Great America gets a Mach Extreme Spinner. Maybe a regular Mach Multi-Launch. Yeah, something similar but not as expensive as Copperhead Strike. I think an Extreme Spinner is possible for the chain's big four. Cedar Point, Kings Island, Canada's Wonderland, Carowinds. Beyond that, don't count on it. Jaden Murphy. SeaWorld will go bankrupt in four years and Cedar Fair will buy them. I'm selling this. SeaWorld has been really weird over the last few years. They went from a very dark place after Blackfish to a major resurgence with all their new coasters. Then COVID really screwed up their major 2020 plans. All these reports came out about them not paying their vendors. But then they reported outstanding revenue and they tried to buy out Cedar Fair. Unless they're putting up a happy front and there's some major problems underneath. They seem to be okay. As of right now, I have no reason to think they're not. SCR stuff. Alton Towers will get Secret Weapon 9 in 2025. I'm buying this. Who knows, it could even be sooner. There was an eight year gap between SW5 and 6, Air and 13. But then, only three years till Smiler, and five more years till Wickerman. 2025 is seven years from Wickerman, so they would be due. With the emergence of the B&M Surf Coaster, that seems like a perfect addition for Alton Towers. Trying to stay under the tree line, but still offering an awesome and thrilling ride. Thunder Dash. Carolina Cyclone will last 20 more years since the new repaint and refurbishment. I'm selling this. 20 years is a long time, and it seems like Cedar Fair hasn't been big on keeping rides around. It's already over 40 years old, and I don't think it's going to live to be 60. Carowinds is one of their favorite parks, and they're going to want to pluck out the older, less popular rides for new ones. Carowinds has no shortage of old and bad coasters, and over the next 20 years, I think Carolina Cyclones' time will be up. It probably has 10 years, I bet on that, but not 20. Mitchell Rees. The rumored shuttle wooden coaster for Dorney Park will open within the next couple years. I'm buying this. It seemed like this was a slam dunk for the park, and then it got canned for COVID. But if they wanted to do this in the past, I don't see why they wouldn't want to do it in the future. I know plans get canceled sometimes. We just saw it with Vipair at LeBron. But once everything gets back to normal completely, I think it's still going to happen. That probably means the end of Possessed. But Dorney really needs a new coaster, and this would be a good one. Chief Scarneck. Hershend will acquire a Western Independent Park by 2030. Hershend just bought Kentucky Kingdom, 
But they were looking for a buyer because Ed Hart wanted to retire. Question is, will any Western Park be looking to sell? There aren't too many independent parks in the West that aren't tiny. You got Cliffs, Western Playland, Lakeside. I guess it's possible, but I wouldn't bet on it. They would probably be interested in Silverwood and Lagoon, but I've heard nothing about them wanting to sell. Logan Kendrick, Wild Adventures will get an RMC Raptor within the next five years. It'd be easy to sell this. The park rarely gets new additions. Swampwater Snake is a kid's coaster added back in 2019. That was their first coaster in 16 years. The only one Hershen added since they bought the park. They lost Viking Voyage in 2018, and then they lost Cheetah in 2020. When Cheetah closed, they said it's been retired to make room for new and exciting changes in the coming years. It'd be hard for them to blow off this park after closing one of their major coasters. Maybe Cheetah gets RMC, or maybe RMC gets them a Raptor instead. I'm buying this. We know they're getting something. This could be it. Thusieville. Six Flags America RMC's Roar in 2023. I'm selling this. It's gotta be infuriating to have this as your home park. They just never seem to get anything right. RMC Roar should have happened years ago. I don't trust them to do what makes sense. They just transformed Apocalypse into Firebird. They'll probably ride that wave for the next several years. They may RMC Roar by 2030, but it won't be next year. Parrot Gaming. Within the next 19 years, Knott's won't replace any coasters. I love this question. It really gets you to think. 19 years is a long time, and there are so many coasters that could be in danger. I'd say the only truly safe coaster is Hangtime. Sierra Sidewinder should be okay. We talked about B&M's having a lifespan. In 19 years, Silver Bullet will be almost 40. Ghost Rider hopefully will be fine, but who knows? It may need another overhaul. Montezuma is getting that overhaul now, so this should be good for the next 19 years. Pony Express, Accelerator, Coast Rider, Jaguar. I can see all of these being taken out over that time. Knott's doesn't take out coasters too often, just one since 2000, but I think it's unlikely everything there survives the next 19 years. Let's end this with Roxy Nano. Nobody will buy an SNS access coaster. I had never even considered this, but it's something that should be discussed. There have been models in the past that have been introduced but never sold, but I don't think this will be one of them. This is a gimmicky coaster. It doesn't have to be tall or long to be interesting. It has decent capacity with the long trains. It can be launched or with a lift. It seems like Six Flags is going to get one of these at some point. It's just too marketable to ignore. That's a wrap on Buy or Sell Episode 4. Thanks to everyone who sent in your questions. I pick about 25 per episode, so there's hundreds I don't get to. But if you want yours to be considered, be sure to leave your idea in the comments below, starting with the words Buy or Sell. Let me know what you think about my picks, and if you agree or disagree with anything here, and why. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. And if you're new here, please consider giving me a sub. And check out my playlist for the other episodes in this series. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server. And my second channel, where I post copyright-free off-ride footage. And my baseball channel, if you also happen to love baseball. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.